Hi, my name is Linda Teese, and I just wanted to share a couple of things. Every day on social media or the internet, I get articles about uh, symptoms that people dismiss and diagnosis that get missed. And so many people get frustrated by the medical uh, process of trying to get answers for mystery illnesses, random symptoms, they really don't know a lot about why these things are happening. So today I wanted to share with you as a health empowerment coach, uh, I wanted to share with you five tips for how you can learn to be an advocate and that's for yourself or for other people. And the first tip I have for you is to dig deeper. Um, a lot of times we go into an appointment and we get advice and we just, or recommendations, and we just accept what is being spoken to us. And if we're not uh, aware of other options, then it's really, really important to pause, step back, and really evaluate what other options do you have. Um, so many times people get a diagnosis and that just becomes the destiny of what happens. You have this long to live. You definitely need to have a surgery. You're going to need this, you're going to need that. And so oftentimes people are uh, struggling and frustrated because they don't feel in control. And one way to change that control was really something that my dad taught me. When he was diagnosed with a terminal illness, um, he was very scared, he was only 53 years old. And he went to his doctor and he said, I need you to partner with me. And that was probably the most pivotal thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And it really changed the way that I approached any medical uh, circumstances that I was in. And the best advice his doctor gave him was, don't let your prognosis be your diagnosis. Those are my words. That wasn't exactly what he said, but the, the idea was the same, is that there's a lot that you can do. Uh, the outcome wasn't going to change for my father. What it was going to do was give him a sense of control, was to give him maybe some more time, and in fact, it did. For him, it was he was given six to 18 months to live, and he lived four years, was able to take my mom to Hawaii for three weeks, and was able to walk two of us down the aisle. So, you know, it really, really is important to dig deeper and not just succumb to the information that you're given. The second tip I have for you is to ask more questions. I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but if you're not prepared and you go into your doctor appointment and your doctor's on a time schedule and already running behind, if you don't step up and start asking questions, and have a list of questions, you're going to get a quick answer and a quick, is there anything else? And your mind will be so overwhelmed with what you've just heard or the information that's been shared that you won't know how to react. And then you've missed the opportunity to get that information. And then oftentimes you leave and you feel frustrated or scared or sad or confused. And then somebody asks you a question about it and you're like, I have no idea, I don't remember. And that's oftentimes what happens. Um, plus the most important thing about asking questions is that when you are prepared, it completely changes the dynamic. Um, I've been in many situations where gone in with a list of questions and the doctor actually sits down right in front of me, looks me in the eyes, and it will change the way you feel about your own health. So when you have a sense of control, it gives you confidence. And confidence is where you begin to think outside the box and start going, well, what else can I do? And you start to feel the freedom of gaining more information and more insight about what you're dealing with. And that leads me to my third tip, which is treat your doctor like your partner, not your manager. A lot of times, you know, in that relationship, if you think about it, like the average doctor, I would imagine has around 2000 patients. And if their schedule is packed, and they're busy, and they've got a lot on their mind, unless you are prepared, um, your doctor will treat you like a patient. What you want your doctor to treat you like is a customer, is a partner, like my dad experienced. And that's someone that comes to the table 
you come to the table, they come to the table, and everybody's on the same page of wanting a solution, of wanting to find, you know, ways to uh, heal or different th modalities or different things that you can do. And that's when you really begin to see a change in the way you approach any kind of medical treatment. Um, and besides, <laughs> you know, we are paying customers. We are paying for them. Even if you have insurance and you're only paying a small amount, the bottom line is you are paying them for your expertise. So the best way to get your money's worth, if you will, is to have that relationship and to approach it in that same way. Um, my fourth tip for you is to see what other options you have. Sometimes that involves a conversation with your physician or your practitioner, and sometimes that involves doing some research, asking around. Um, a lot of people that you know struggle privately or uh, you know, publicly with a health issue, and you may know someone who is actually able to provide you some insights. And anytime you can get leveraged learning is when you are actually going to see major improvements in your health uh, results. So, you know, as you're looking at ways to take control of the situation, that's one way that you can take control is to be the one looking for solutions. And the last tip that I have for you, the fifth tip is to trust your intuition. If you go into your uh, appointment and you don't feel 100% on board with the recommendation, um, you have every right to thank them for their time and choose someone else. You have every right to pause and take a moment to really reflect on, you know, what can I do to feel good about this situation. And sometimes it just involves taking a breath, digesting the information, getting more information and moving forward. And sometimes it means going in an entirely different direction. For me, that experience happened when I was told I would probably need a hip replacement. My mistake was I went to the same orthopedic surgeon that my mom had used to replace both of her hips. And he said, oh, you can thank your mom. You're gonna probably need a hip replacement at some point. Well, in my frustration, I scheduled a massage. And during the massage, the massage therapist said, you know, we just hired somebody that was, uh, just came to us from a chiropractor office. And I think, quite frankly, this is your psoas muscle. I'd never even heard of the psoas muscle. So I made an appointment with the gal three days later and she said, yes, your psoas muscle is extremely tight. And so she went in to do that psoas muscle release. And I about came off the table. The pain was so intense that I wept. I literally got off the table and was able to walk. Now, that's important because for an entire year prior to that, I was about to surrender and just do the surgery I was struggling to walk. I was literally grabbing my window and my car to pull myself up out of my car. I was in so much pain. I was sitting a lot more, which probably contributed to a tight psoas muscle, unbeknownst to me. I didn't know any of this information. And once I got that psoas muscle released and I went regularly for you know, twice a month to the same massage therapist and she worked on that muscle because you've heard probably that muscles have memory. And what happened for me was that I was actually able to start moving more and to start being more active. And in fact, uh, within a very short period of time, um, within a year, I believe I um, decided to start walking. I bought myself a puppy and we walked to the level that he was able to, she was able to walk. And we walked literally by I think by the following year, I was walking six miles a day. By 2020 and 2021, I was walking 5,000 miles between the two years. And that's 5 million steps for anybody that wants to know that little fun fact. But the bottom line is that I haven't had that surgery. And that was actually five years ago. So I just caution you as you're advocating for yourself Part of the process of having the confidence to be an advocate is to use all of these tips, 
dig deeper, ask more questions, treat your doctor like he's your partner, not your manager, ask what other options are and trust your intuition. And when you can put all of those together, you can have the confidence to refuse a surgery if, if that's appropriate, um, but refuse a prescription medication, again, if that's appropriate. Now, I'm not here to give you medical advice. I'm simply telling you what worked for me. And that's what I want to do. I really want to be on here and share more tips and inspire you to try and, and take some steps to the healthiest version of you. So like and follow. And I look forward to um, interacting and doing some Q and A's in the future and really getting to know, you know, what concerns and questions, uh, that you may have. So look forward to getting to know you. Thanks.